Hello and welcome to Console Classics 101. In this installment, I'm talking about the Sega Master System, first released by Sega in Japan in 1985 under the original title, the SG-1000 Mark III. The Mark III was one of the main competitors to Nintendo's Famicom, boasting more powerful hardware in just about every field. It had a 4 MHz processor, which was in fact the same processor speed as the future Super Nintendo, so that really shows you how far ahead of the time the Sega was. Um, the sprites were more colorful, um, there could be more of them, it just basically this was a souped up NES or Famicom. However, Nintendo really was a juggernaut in the late 80s, so they had all the games that people wanted to play, so unfortunately, um, Sega found themselves second fiddle to Nintendo, and the Master System was quietly retired in favor of an early release of the Mega Drive, or Sega Genesis, in 1988. The original Master System is a system that's worth picking up, even though there is a converter that allows you to play Master System games on a Sega Genesis or Sega Mega Drive. Now, I'm going to be talking about the original model of the hardware here. There were two models. This one was released in 1986. This is the North American original version. And there is a slimmer uh, version, that, which is the Master System 2, that was released in Europe exclusively um, in the early 90s. Now, if you look at the front of the system, it has a power button right here, which is rather large and you know very nice. It's, it's just like the NES power supply, or a power button. You have two controller ports um, that are use a 9-pin configuration um, that is exactly the same as the uh, as the Sega Genesis or Sega or, or Atari or just about any other controller like that. Um, games on the Master System came in two different formats. They came on cartridges, which is what you typically expect. You know, the cartridges go in the top cartridge slot there. Or they came on cards, like uh, Turbo Graphics 16 or PC Engine games did. These are like chip games. These games here uh, hold very limited number of limit, very limited data, so um, there's not that they're not that useful. But a few games did get exclusively released in this format, so that's kind of neat, right? Sega cards, credit card little games. But the majority of the games came on cartridges. Um, what's kind of neat about Master System games is Sega was really, really forward thinking. Um, most games nowadays, in fact, all games nowadays, come in DVD cases or Blu ray cases. And back in the day, Master System games came in, in very similar cases like this. This is Alex Kidd Miracle World, and it comes in this clamshell case that you can open up. And then you get your manual there, and you get your game cartridge, and there you go. It's very similar, in fact, to the Sega Genesis clamshell cases. These were more expensive to produce, of course, than cardboard boxes, but they stand the test of times remarkably well. I mean, come on, this game is from 1986, so beautiful, right? All right, so on the top of the system, you have your cartridge port, you have your reset button, and you have a pause button. Now, it's kind of weird because the controllers themselves don't have a pause button. To pause your games, you have to physically get up and press the button on the console itself. Alright, so let's go over to the back of the system. Back here, you have your power supply. This is actually a 9-volt um, power supply with a center pin negative, um, just like the Sega Genesis Model 1. If you have... Um, a Japanese Famicom or Japanese Super Famicom or PC Engine, you can all use the same power supply on a Master System. You cannot, however, use an NES power supply, so make sure you don't even try, because if you do, you'll blow your Master System and you'll you know, have to buy a new one. Um, beside that is your RF output, and that's pretty self-explanatory, it gives you crappy RF. Beside that is your channel 3 and 4 switch, uh, that's for the RF. Beside that is your AV um, DIN connector that's the same as the Sega Genesis Model 1 that gives you um, composite video output, and it's also RGB ready as well. So if you have a SCART cable, you can simply plug that in um, to the same thing. It uses the same SCART cable as the Model 1 Sega Genesis, or Sega Mega Drive as it's known in Europe. Now, however, RGB output is very dark on a Master System, so 
that's why I have mine actually modified. So I, mine has these two additional ports that you wouldn't normally find on a Master System. This one right here is a composite, or uh, is, is a standard RCA um, mono sound output, so I can use um, just a typical RCA um, mono jack to get audio, so I don't have to use this DIN connector. And beside that is um, S-Video. S-Video looks absolutely fantastic on the Master System, so if you can mod it, I definitely would recommend it. On the very far uh, far of the system, you have an FM enable switch, this thing right here. Now, the way that works is because the system has actually two different sound processors. The built-in PSG um, sound is actually inferior um, to that of the NES or Famicom, and because of it, a lot of Master System games don't sound ne anywhere near good as uh, near near as good as NES counterparts would. Now you can mod in a optional Yamaha YM2413 expansion um, FM module into a Master System and give it FM synthesis capabilities for certain games. In Japan, this was a separate module that was available for the SG-1000 Mark III, but it was never available in North America or Europe, so although there were games that were released that used it, uh, nothing took advantage of it, so the, feature, so the feature went unused. So this is something that you could add in optionally into a Master System. You can't do this to a Sega Genesis, so that's one of the main reasons why um, it's beneficial to get a, an original Master System as opposed to getting um, a Genesis you know, power base converter. Now, I'm going to be talking about some of the games here. Now, the games that came out for the Master System um, typically were better than the, what they would be for the NES, but there weren't that many, so we, when you look at the libraries as a whole, you really got to pick and choose the ones that are great. Now, I've chose 10 games here that I think that are fantastic games and um, shouldn't break the bank too much. Um, Master System games... I should mention, are region free, so you can pick up um, European games and play them on a North American system or play your North American games on a European system. For the most part, about 98% of the games are region free, and there are a tiny few number of PAL games that don't work on a North American system, but by and large, you should be fine you know, playing just about anything you want. Now, however, one thing that should be mentioned is this is not true for Japanese Master Systems. The Japanese Master System uses a different cartridge size than the North American games do, so you can't physically connect uh, a Japanese game into a North American or European system, or you can't connect a North American or European game into a Japanese system. So keep that in mind if you're planning on getting um, a system from Japan or getting games from Japan. Alright, so, um, oh yeah, one th other thing I should mention is the controller. This is the controller that the Master System came with. It's got this weird disc D-pad thing. But luckily, the Master System is not, very fun is not very picky when it comes to controllers. So if you want, you can simply use any Genesis controller you have. Or, if you're like me, you can get the Rare Competition Pro joystick, which I've uh, talked about in a previous video. So check the annotation and check this controller out. The only thing is it's kind of rare. All right, so let's talk about some games here. Now, these are the games I would recommend that people pick up. First one, Hang On and Astro Warrior. Hang On is an all right game, but Astro Warrior is a must. So, you know, even if you don't get the combo pack, pick up Astro Warrior. Great game. Rescue Mission. Rescue Mission is a light phaser game for the Master System. This is actually one of the best light, game, light gun games for um, any 8-bit console. Much better than anything that came out for the NES. Bubble Bobble, classic arcade game. In fact, better than the NES version is. Shinobi, great port of an arcade game. Outrun, one of the best racing games of the 80s. Came to the Master System, and this is a great port. Putt and Putter. This is a golf game. A lot of fun. Sonic Chaos, or just about any Sonic game you can think of. R-Type. An awesome shooter. Rastan. Awesome platformer. 
And lastly, asterisks. Anyway, so there we go, guys. Thanks.